what's happening? So if you made it to this video, you're here because of the title, um, what to look for in a mid 2000s, you know, F-Series 200, 225, 250, 3.3 liter. If you're looking to buy a boat with that series of motor on it, or if you're looking to repower with this motor, or if you've come across a situation where you're having to look at either a boat or specifically this engine, um, what are some of the things you should look for? Now, there's a lot of really good information out there online about the problems with these engines and why you should stay away from them or what you can look for when you're in the process of maybe purchasing one. Um, so I kind of wanted to put together a video talking about two of the major issues. And of course, they are the dreaded exhaust corrosion issue and the oil pump issues. So the, the exhaust issue, guys, it's, it's simply put, the exhaust material that Yamaha used corrodes after a certain amount of time on these engines. And I've seen in the forums, doing my research on this one, some of the newer 4.2s have started showing some cor corrosion issues in the exhaust. The industry dubs it a dry exhaust corrosion, meaning that the material's corroding not because of exposure to the elements or salt water, but because of the quality of material maybe and it's degrading over time and it's just pitting and falling apart and you know corroding away so it's just a it's a it's a crappy situation if you have a boat or you're looking at a boat with these issues but how to determine whether or not I can buy this boat with exhaust issues or does this boat have exhaust issues is it corroding so there's a couple of different ways to do this, but before I say anything about how to do either one of those, if you can't pull the power head and look at the bottom of the block or the, the mating surfaces of the exhaust plates and the power head, you can't get a definitive answer. Now, are there quick visual checks that you can do to kind of see how far along the corrosion may or may not be to see just how bad it is? Can I inspect it to see if there's any exhaust corrosion at all or has the midsection been replaced on this motor already? Um, there are a few different ways to do it. You know, the first way people would look at is say, hey, let me pull the foot, the lower unit. <laughs> I'm going to trim it up. So let me get my flashlight here, guys. And once you've got it up, you can just do a visual. You can look up in the exhaust. This port here, guys, is your exhaust. Shine a light up in there and look. What's it looking like? You know, kind of corrosion kind of stuff do I have going on? You can buy a cheap scope. This one came off Amazon. It's like 25 bucks. Um connects to your smartphone. Slide up, look for crazy amounts of excessive corrosion, holes, chunks missing out of the exhaust. Um, you know, you can also do a water test, which is pretty common for people. There's two different ways you can do it. You can hook a hose to the water pickup, the water tube, whatever you want to call it. Or you can plug that, and then you can just throw a uh, water hose on your flush port and fill the motor up with water. If water starts running out of here, out of this section here, then you've probably got some excessive corrosion because water is getting into the exhaust um, and that's a bad sign. You know, that it's definitely time for an exhaust. Again, going back to what I said before we started talking about it is that if you do have any of this corrosion going on, um, or you're wanting to get a definitive answer is the corrosion at the power head, which is if it's there and it's started in the power head, it's almost detrimental. It's not worth wasting your time. Um, but if it is there, or if you're trying to determine if it's there or not, the only way to really do it is to pull the power head. Um, it's not a tremendously huge job to pull the power head on these. You just, you know, you're disconnecting your rigging. And you're, you know, you drop your your side shafts off and 
unbolt everything, you know, lift the motor up. For guys with basic tools and shop, it might be a much, you know, you're going to need an overhead hoist or forklift or something like that to help you out with the process. But um, if you've got all of those and you're mechanical, then it's a fairly easy job. But you would inspect the bottom of the power head and the water jacket and passageways and stuff like that. See if they're corroded through or see how bad it looks in there. That's the only real way to get definitive answers on the exhaust corrosion. Again, you can slide a scope up into the exhaust, you know, kind of get a visual. You know, if it looks really bad, then it is really bad. Or if it's just starting, you can maybe gauge it a little bit. But again... Definitive answer, if the motor's worth it or not, is power head needs to be pulled and the exhaust needs to be inspected. I mean, that's always going to be my argument because you could show very little. Um, in theory, you could show very little corrosion in the actual exhaust system, but there'd be a lot of corrosion at the power head. Um, generally, it works its way up from the exhaust and into the power head from everything that I can tell on everybody else's experience on how it's been documented and talked about on the interwebs. End of the day, um, the exhaust corrosion issue on these motors is a big deal. And there's a second staple to the corrosion is availability of parts. So I called all over the country looking for an exhaust kit and found one. I think Parts View is who had it. Um, and they had a few left over from, from a bulk order. A lot of the manufacturers out there, or I say, I should, excuse me, distributors of parts um, are telling us the manufacturer has this on you know back order it's a national back order can't get them um, that they, they may be able to order them and they may come through um, I've seen some talk where you have to order each piece at a time you can't just order the entire exhaust kit like I have here um, but it's expensive ordering it part at a time so Parts availability is becoming an issue with this generation motor on the exhaust system. I don't know if Yamaha has plans to just completely discontinue it or if it's just a logistics thing or whatever. But if they do completely discontinue that exhaust system for this series of engines, it's really going to put a service life cap on these really good reliable engines top end of this motor i haven't had any issues everything's been great it's been flawless honestly other than just now noticing i've got this exhaust corrosion issue going on now um and that i have um a leaky oil pump which brings me to the second part of the video the second big topic that everybody wants to talk about on the 3.3 liter four stroke yamahas is the oil pump and i don't know if we can see you can kind of see it up in there it's back in there, that little like snout with a hole in it at the bottom of the power head. That's like the snout on the bottom of the oil pump. And what happens is the seals eventually just wear out on them. But again, another alloy, I think is a metal urgy alloy kind of deal, is the seal surface on the crankshaft where this oil pump sits. These seals wear grooves in the, in the actual... Uh, Crankshaft and when that happens You know, you've got to do a sleeve kit. So you got to put a speedy sleeve in it So you're just essentially replacing the seal surface on the crankshaft So it's pretty easy to do. I haven't seen any issues with getting these parts um, Boats.net had them. They came right in um, So happy with that um, But either one of these If you're going to do the exhaust Go ahead and buy the dang oil pump and the sleeve kit. If you're going to do the oil pump, go ahead and buy the exhaust or try to chase track one down. You're going to have to do it eventually on that series of engine. Um, there's, oh, what year did it start? What year did it stop? Guys, I've seen it, you know, from early the 2000s when these motors first came out um, and all the way up, and I think, to 18 on like 4.2. So it's a Yamaha thing. I don't think it's particular to an exact horsepower of engine. You know, I see a lot of the comments, oh, it was only the 225. Uh, that's trash because that's a 250. Um, so it's essentially a Yamaha thing that started in the mid-2000s on these F-Series engines. And from what I can tell, um, I did read a post the other day where, and I think it was an 18, 
4.2 liter. Guy had it all apart in a bunch of pictures of it, and same thing, exhaust was corroded up. So not from what I can, just from reading online, from what I can tell, it's not, it does not exclude the newer motors. Some of the newer motors are starting to show signs of that weird exhaust corrosion. But here nor there, if you have to do the oil pump, go ahead and buy the exhaust. If you have to do the exhaust, go ahead and get the oil pump because to do either one of them, you got to pull the power head and they're both right there in that general working area. Go ahead and knock them out and get them done. It's worth the money. Um, again, you know, speedy sleeve kit. It's just a sleeve that goes over the crankshaft. If you do order the kit, if you're going to do it yourself, um, order new motor mount bolts, the midsection bolts, whatever you want to call them. They hold the midsection together. Hold the they normally are corroded pretty good on these boats. Um, let's see if I can kind of show you here. I keep that pretty greased up, but you know, that bolt nut and stuff's right there. Um, there it is. That one looks all right, but the bottom ones are pretty rough, and I've got the chaffs off. They're, they're corroded almost away. So I'm hoping I don't have to cut them off and get creative on how to get them out of there. But... It's a good idea to go ahead and replace those bolts. You know, you're there, you might as well. They are expensive because they're a particular length and size. There's two different lengths. So um, grab the bolts if you're gonna do the exhaust and or oil pump because you're gonna have to, you don't necessarily need the bolts if you're just gonna do oil pump. But like I said, if you're gonna do one, you need to go ahead and do both of them because it is a pain in the butt you know, to do one and then later have to come back and do the other. Um, you know, labor wise, if you're going to pay a shop to do it, if they're going to be in there doing an exhaust, tell them you want to do this sleeve kit and an oil pump, just do it anyway. It's 500 bucks and you're done versus a couple thousand to go back and do it later on down the road with labor and stuff tacked to it. Just my advice. I would do it that way. But you know, this motor's been great. It's been super reliable. Like I said, I've done all kind of fishing with it. We do scalloping trips. We go to the Keys. We go, um, I mean, we take it on the river. My kids tube behind it. Um, and we've had a great time in this. You know, I've got a bass boat with a mercury on the back. Um, haven't had any issues with exhaust or corrosion or anything like that. I hate that Yamaha's got this kind of stigma on their name with this corrosion stuff because I think they have a really good product. I think this is like a quality control thing and their metallurgy that kind of maybe got past them and they didn't realize it until it started showing its head in the field. Like there just wasn't a test to see the how well this exhaust was going to hold up. I, I don't know, but it's for a long time, it was almost viewed as, you know, routine maintenance on these Yamahas that you needed to, you know, every so many hundred hours replace the whole exhaust system on it. And it's a, a time thing as much as it is an hour thing and that length and age of the motor, I think they have, you know, issues where the, the older, the motor, the more prone you are to have this exhaust when they sit up or whatever. I've read all different types of things, but essentially, you know, there's been motors with 200 hours on them or less than 200 hours where the guys have holes in the exhaust and they're having to replace the entire exhaust system, but the motor's, you know, 10 years old. So, um, if you're looking to buy one of these and you're trying to determine how much work you're going to have to do on one to make it worth, you know, buying, I mean, if you could buy like this boat, like this 24 foot scout, great boat, you know, for the flats and the bays and stuff like that. If, if you were going to buy one of these and this was the motor on it, you know, the information I'm trying to provide is the good guidance on how to kind of inspect uh, the different ways, using a scope, using a flashlight, you know, running water through the motor to kind of see if it comes out of the exhaust or, and, and, or checking the oil pump to make sure that, um, it's not pouring oil, but I don't really know that, I would look, if I saw one, then I would just go ahead and bet on doing both of them, both jobs. Do the oil pump and do the exhaust or do the exhaust and the oil pump. Either way, you're going to have to do both of them and go ahead and do it. If you, like I said, if you can do it yourself, you've got an overhead hoist forklift or whatever, you can save yourself a bunch of money. Um, if you're going to pay a shop, you're, 
you know, I've seen quotes from three to five thousand dollars to do it, and I don't know if the motor's worth that. And again, then again, the parts availability on these um, exhaust kits is getting harder and harder to come by. So um, it, that's it. But I don't know if you guys have more questions or if I left something out or if you want to critique me on what I talked about, please feel free to go ahead and drop it in the comments. You're going to do it anyway. So um, do what you want. But I hope this helps. I hope it provides insight on these, like I said, the not all of them, but especially the mid-2000s, 3.3 liter F-Series, 200, 225, 250s, um, and some of their heartaches with, you know, major faults like the corrosion or oil pump. Um, other than that, man, I hadn't had any issue out of this, dude. It's been a great motor. I mean, I keep it up, and I service it every year, and... You know, if I run it hard, I might it might get two oil changes a year, just depending on how how hard we go at it. But family man, just family boat. You know, I live in South Georgia. You know, we're close to the Gulf. You know, we've got rivers and stuff. It's been a great boat, and great motor, and I've had a good time with it. Now I'm having to do some work on it. So, um, but again, let me know if I can help you guys out. Appreciate your time. Maybe this will help some of y'all that need a little advisement on what to do. If they're looking to buy a boat with this motor or this series on it. Thanks, guys.